This is a video for how to go about constraining cams and creating cam motion to a given automata box for activity 4.1.7, simulating cam motion in your introduction to engineering design class. You'll notice on the screen that I am within the activity 4.1.7 simulating cam motion assignment. And as we scroll down, you notice that you will be uh, using Fusion 360 for this assignment and that you will need cam models from activities 4.1.2 and 4.1.6. Within my YouTube channel I have videos that show you how to create all the cams that you would need from activity 4.1.2. We use uh, it, the parametric equation function to make all these different cams to allow you to be able to function within the assignment. So if you need to go back and create the cams and within my YouTube channel you can find each one of these each one of the five cams here. As you scroll down within resources you will see that there is an automata box that you can download. You need to click on the link for the Fusion 360 automata box and download it and once you do that go to Fusion 360 and create for yourself a new project if you've not already done so and you need to upload the automata box that you just downloaded from the from the curriculum into Fusion 360. You can do this by clicking upload, finding the file, and uploading it to this assignment. You'll notice on the screen that I have a given automata box that you download, and I have a four separate follow these red followers here are four separate followers, and these are going to have vertical motion that go up and down, and we will be creating our cams and constraining them to this crankshaft and putting them underneath each one of kind of these what we would call you know kind of follower shoes right here if you will also up here we have a follower guide that keeps everything vertical and these shoes right here are what are going to touch the actual cams when we constrain them so in order to start constraining cams we need to be sure that we have all five cams created we'll only be constraining four of them since we only have four separate places to place them we're going to start by constraining a pair cam and i'm going to drag and drop and hold down and drag over and drop a pair cam into the graphics window and I can click and hold down and drag the cam off to the left hand side of the automata box and I can rotate the cam as I wish by holding down on these edges you can kind of refer to these maybe as steering wheels a little bit and I can rotate them around and what I want is I want to place the cam and have it rotated towards the automata box in a way that it would allow me to easily place the center of this hole onto the center of our crankshaft here. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And now we're going to constrain the cam onto our crankshaft. We're going to go up to Assemble and we'll go to Joint. And the joint I want to assemble is the center point of this. And the best way to do that is to click on this little black circle around the outside. I have a black circle here, and that gives me that center point. I'm now going to click on the center of the crankshaft. I want to make sure that we do not click on any other part of the automata box, just this crankshaft within here. And we're going to click, and you're going to notice that automatically it's going to place our cam that lines up with the center, or a center line, if you will, of our crankshaft here. Now I can move this over and drag it and place it as I wish. And you'll notice that we want to we want to line this up with these followers right here. And I'm going to do my best to get it perfectly right underneath. And you'll notice that I'm a little bit too far to the left or a little bit too far to the right. And I can notice that as I'm along the z-axis over here, I'm either 1.3 or I'm 1.2. And we want to go ahead and divide that in half. And I'm going to place the offset at 1.25 inches. When we go up to motion to place what kind of a constraint it is, we want to keep it as a rigid constraint. Now, as we go back and turn our view cube a little bit, you can see that we've placed the pair cam onto our crankshaft. Now, if I want to see how this will rotate, I can come up to joints. I'm going to hit the little arrow over here to the left of joint. And what I want to do is I want to run the revolute constraint that is the crankshaft here. And if I right click on revolute, I can go down to animate joint relationships. And you can see that that pair cam, since it's rigid, as if that we glued it on there, it's going to rotate. And it's rotating at the same angle that we would be turning this crankshaft. Or this kind of, excuse me, the side uh, lever as it rotates the crankshaft around. You can see how this rotates. Let's hit escape twice on our keyboard. Next step, we want to make sure that this cam always touches this kind of bottom foot is what I call it. I call these kind of shoes or feet when I teach the class to my students. Because this right here is coming down and touching just the edge only of our cam. And we want to make sure it follows the entire surface around the outside edge of the, of the pair cam that we created. So we're going to go up to Assemble. And we're going to do something called Tangent Relationship. And we click on Tangent Relationship. We want to say the bottom of this surface will touch really any of the surfaces 
of the pair camp and we can say OK. Now if I go back to a front view, I can see now that the cam touches this surface right here. And if I come back over to this Revolute joint and I go to Animate Joint Relationships, you can see now this follower is going to go up and down according to the design of our pair cam. So we have constrained the cam onto the crankshaft, made it rotate with the crankshaft, given a tangent relationship between the pair cam and this foot here, and we can see now that the, the behavior of this follower right here is directly related to the shape of our pair cam. I'm going to escape twice on our keyboard. We're going to go back and let's do the eccentric cam. I want to drag and drop our eccentric cam out. Notice that has a tendency to go ahead and just kind of initially snap to a 0, 0, 0 coordinate. You can see that over here, pretty much an absolute 0 coordinate. We can drag this out. And just a good practice that I like to do is to rotate around to where it looks like the exact same thing I would do if I was going to place this physically in real life onto our crankshaft. I want it turned towards it. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to go up to Joint. I'm going to find that black circle here again. I'm going to come down here and find the same black circle. Now you could hold down on the control key and get some more specific points, but I think that's just an easy way to go about getting this particular, um, just to get the center points onto the crankshaft, I think it's kind of an easier way. We're going to drag this over until it's directly underneath the second follower. And as I drag it over, as I go left or right, I feel like I'm just a little bit too far to the left or too far to the right. So I'm going to go at 2.25 and I'm going to say, OK. I'm going to come back. We want to do a tangent relationship now. Let's go up to assemble. Let's go tangent relationship. This surface needs to always be touching this surface we see right here. In this case, it bumped up a little bit. We forced that follower to come up. Let's say OK. Let's go back over to Revolute. Let's right click and go to Animate Joint Relationships. You can see now that the, the eccentric cam has more of a consistent up and down, whereas that pair cam causes this file where it just kind of, you know, just to peek its head up just a little bit at certain times. This goes into timing mechanisms, you know, within an engine. That's what these cams are designed to do, to create vertical motion. As we rotate 360 degrees on this crank over here, we're directly um, affecting the vertical motion of these red followers. Let's hit escape on our keyboard a couple times. Let's drag and drop the heart cam out. As I drag and drop the heart cam out, I can click and hold down and drag it over. I'm going to go ahead and rotate again. I can just quickly rotate this around 90 degrees. I'm going to say OK. We're going to go ahead and constrain this onto our automata box. Joint. Find the center point right here by clicking on the black circle. Back down into here. Black circle. Same thing. Let's go back to our front view. Let's go ahead and drag this one over. I want to make sure we're right underneath. This follower right here looks to me like we're doing okay with this. I just, I, maybe I'm a little bit too precise. It would still probably work if we left it here. I'm going to make sure I go in 3.25. Make sure again we're in a rigid constraint. Back up to assemble, tangent relationship. These two surfaces must touch. You can see that that footing kind of came down. We can't see exactly where it went, kind of went in this, you know, kind of little dip in the heart cam. Let's go back over to Revolute. Let's go to animate joint relationships. We can really see that follower motion being affected by that heart cam. The goal of this at some point is to create cams on the crankshaft that touch the followers that give us a very, very specific behavior to accomplish a very, very specific task. This is part of functional analysis. The des geometric design of the cam goes directly into the function of what the intended purpose of the automata box is. I'm going to hit escape twice on my keyboard, and I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop the eccentric cam out. So I'm going to drag and drop my eccentric cam. Kind of want to drag it out over here. Same part. We're going to do the same things. I'm going to drag this around to 90 degrees. I'm going to say OK. Let's go back up to join again. Find my center point here by clicking on my black circle around the outside. It's good to zoom in to get as many options as you can. Same thing here. Let's go back to our front view. I'm going to drag out. I'm going to drag and drop my hexagon cam over. I'm going to put in a 4.25 just to make sure we're right underneath it. I'm going to say OK. Let's go up to assemble. Tangent relationship. These objects will touch. Just make sure tangency means I only touch at one point. I don't go through. Let's go back to Revolute. Let's go to Animate Joint Relationships. And you can see 
how that hexagon cam is more of just a, a quick, consistent pulsing. You know, this heart cam has the most kind of almost unpredictable kind of motion. You can see the uh, you can see that that eccentric cam is pretty predictable, and the pair cam just comes up every so often. So what's neat about fusion is I can go in and constrain objects and force them to relate one another via geometric relations like a tangent relationship and if i have any kind of a measuring mechanism like you see here with this little um these rulers that are lined up i can gauge where each one of these followers will be based on the 365 degree, 360 degree axis excuse me of this crank so as i look at the side you know we've got 360 degrees here I can say if I stopped this and just rotated the crank, I could say, you know, well, at 270 degrees, where is this follower at here? And I can go back and adjust the location coordinate of these cams and where they start. We could actually go back, you know, rotate these. When we place the um, rigid constraints here, we can rotate their relationship to the cam and where they start, and we can come back over and animate the joint relationships. So. This is a pretty neat assignment and a really uh, fun thing to learn in Fusion. Uh, as you learn how to you know, animate joints and try to find out what the purpose of all these different components relating to one another is. You know, every single part of this automata box you see is a com an individual component of itself over here on the left hand side. And every one of these components has a purpose and a function within the automata box. So this has been a video for how to go about constraining cams and giving tangent relationships to them while they rotate from rotational motion and create vertical motion within a follower for activity 4.1.7 in your introduction to engineering design class.